Hey, what's up guys? My name is Luciano and welcome to episode 120 of Game Programming. So we're back. I'm going to try and do more episodes consistently from now on, okay? I was going to do that last time, but unfortunately I got a bit sick and was not able to do that. But this time I mean it, I'm going to try my best to uh, to continue game programming and actually get somewhere because it's kind of annoying me slightly how this series has been going on for, for like three years basically and we kind of don't have a game done yet so let's uh, let's let's get right on into it so th this episode I want to focus on two things right well basically one thing I want to completely be done with buttons okay right now we have to kind of like that there's there's there are a few bugs and usability issues with buttons that I want to fix up but after that we should be pretty much done with buttons and that's kind of my goal right now so um Basically, right now, one of the bugs that we have is it, it seems to work fine. You can see how the color changes when I mouse over, the color changes when I click and hold down, and then when I release, action performed gets run and everything seems to run pretty well. However, however, there is a bug, and that is if I click somewhere, for example, here, so I, my, right now my mouse is being pressed and I just click and drag, you can see that it registers as a click and then I can let go. Now, I don't believe we want that functionality because as you can see, if I, like with this close button, if I click and drag uh, on here, for example, up here, it does go, it does change the color, but it's not pressed until I actually press it again. That's kind of what we want to happen. So how can we do that? Well, all we need to really do is detect whether or not the mouse was pressed when it was inside, okay? So basically, <coughs> excuse me, still recovering from that cold, but, um. But basically, what we want to do is we want to say that if we weren't inside, yeah, so this, this, this if statement here, right, inside this other if statement, basically what this says is if we're inside the button, but we weren't before and we've just pressed down, right, well actually there's no such thing as press down here. If the mouse is inside and it wasn't inside before, we're going to expand this a little bit, okay, basically, um, before we do this, we want to uh, check to see if the mouse was down, right? Because if we, for example, just say mouse dot. In fact, one thing I'm going to do real quick is this left mouse button pressed. Boolean left mouse button down. Just going to bring that out here so that we don't have to keep checking it uh, since we do use it quite a bit. Um, but basically... <coughs> Excuse me. Basically, if the left mouse button is actually down, um, we like this this case, and I'll I'll show it to you guys. Uh, means that uh, entered while pressed, basically. Okay. So if I run this real quick, uh, you can see that if I press it when I'm inside or whatever, it doesn't print anything. However, if I hold it down and then enter, you can see enter while pressed gets fired exactly once. Okay. So, what we need to do here is actually have another boolean, okay? And that boolean is uh, essentially uh, an ignore press. So, private boolean off the top here is a field, ignore press, or ignore pressed. So, by default, we'll set that to false, okay? Uh, we'll come down here, we'll set ignore pressed equal to true, okay? Otherwise, in fact, I can get rid of these brackets, otherwise, we'll set ignore pressed equal to false. Okay, uh, and basically uh, what we do then, right, is uh, we check for ignore pressed right before we actually perform these kind of events here. So if if it's not pressed um, and ignore pressed is also false, we might be able to combine ignore pressed into pressed actually, I'll, I'll consider that in a second. But basically if it's not pressed and if ignore press is not true, um, and the left mouse button is down, then we fire the event, otherwise we do not. Now, we need some way of resetting ignore pressed. And of course, it's supposed to reset once we let go. So if you look at the Windows Explorer kind of thing, if I drag and then I let go and then I press again, it should work, right? So all we have to do here is actually split this up a little bit. So if pressed, we want to do this section here, which was the original, right? But if the mouse button is simply equal to no button, okay, we do want to set ignore pressed equal to false. All right. 
And then uh, that should basically work. So if we take a look at that, okay, that still works, fantastic. If we drag in, we're not pressed. If I let go and press, there we go, beautiful. So that is fixed. Now, can we combine it to be uh, part of pressed, I wonder, because that would actually be pretty good. So let's see here. So pressed is true when that happens. If not pressed, pressed is false. Um, yeah. Yeah, we might be able to, but unfortunately, the issue I'm seeing right here is that press actually does get reset and press is false by default. So uh, there could be a few issues there because really we only want to let go if we're not pressed. Um, uh, let me just consider this for one more second. So what is this else? So the rectangle doesn't contain it, then press gets set to false. And yeah, we really don't want to mess with that because that's a completely different meaning and it might break things in the future, even if it doesn't now. I suspect it will now though. But anyway, that seems to be fixed right now. So that's beautiful. If we drag in, we you can see we're not pressed, even though I'm holding the mouse button down. If I let go and then press again, uh, it will work. So the API we had for this was pretty basic as well. We made a new UI button and we added a new UI uh, action list and you can see we could do that just as an anonymous class right in line with the rest of our code. We didn't even have to split it up. Uh, of course, if this was, um, in fact, if we were using Java 8, I suspect we could have just used a Lambda, but if it was any other language, we could have just pretty much used a delegate in C Sharp or a function pointer in C, C++. So that would have been much easier, I think, uh, so instead of just specifying a class, we could have just specified a function, uh, as well as just having like an event handler. Uh, wouldn't be too bad, but unfortunately this is Java. And I believe that is fixed in Java 8, but we are running Java 7. I don't want to break compatibility with uh, you people. In fact, we're actually on 1.6 because I did start this in 2012. So we don't really want to mess with that too much. Um, I don't actually know if I've got 1.6 properly installed. I guess I do. No, JRE 1.8. So... We are maintaining compatibility um, and that's an important thing. I don't really mind too much at this point with 1.6 compatibility because it's not, you know, the middle edges anymore, but 1.7 is a bit important to me. So I don't think I'm going to do any of that fancy new stuff just yet. Okay, cool. Anyway, a lot of talking, but that is basically fixed. So a few of the things that I did want to um, make sure here is that our API kind of makes sense, right? So can I make buttons for multiple, like, can I set up buttons my way, basically? Now, <coughs> excuse me, UI button listener has some pretty good things going on here. Uh, it's got some sensible kind of defaults here that we've that we've set up basically for the colors. Um, one thing we've made sure of is that the button only gets fired when we actually let go of the mouse, okay? A lot of people don't like that. Um, there is a, an easy way you can override that, okay? You can actually just override the pressed button and set it equal to uh, perform, all right? In fact, you might not be able to do that properly. Let's see if this works. So uh, what was it? UI button, right? It's a bit weird that that, oh, I guess because, uh, yeah, okay, that makes sense. Uh, why are you so sad? Um, is that correctly overridden? I think so. UI action listener, right? Oh, no, that's an action listener. My bad. Um, how do we set the... See, this is what I'm talking about. We need a good API here. So set button listener is what I'm talking about, I think. So, <coughs> excuse me. Button dot set button listener new UI button listener, um, and then we'll have the method I wanted to override, which was pressed. Uh, and then what you could do uh, is uh, just call button dot um, button dot uh, perform action, which we will create in a minute. All right. Uh, and that is just an example. I don't know why, again, some people might, might like to do that. The reason I'm just kind of, I'm almost playing devil's advocate here, just making sure that uh, the API is kind of uh, flexible enough for people to do whatever they, they really want to do. But basically this will call, um, this is how this is going to work. This is actually a bit trickier than you guys probably think. Uh, obviously I don't want to do that. When we perform the action, which is here, Sorry, uh, it's this, right? 
there is a problem here because if we call it this way, we actually don't want to perform the action. Like you'll see what happens here. If I actually change the action to be something like system dot out dot print line uh, action uh, performed, what's going to happen as you're about to see is when I click it, it's actually going to perform the action twice. Okay, the reason is it does it once from me on the press down and once on the press up because it's naturally going to do that. Yeah, so if I press down here, it's going to do it once as you can see and if I let go, it's going to do it again. So we don't want that, right? Because if you override it and you, and you call, basically if you call perform action explicitly, uh, then it should potentially ignore the next um, perform action. And there should be a way you set that, right? And uh, the reason I don't want it, so one thing we could do really easily, and we're kind of going to do this, private boolean ignore action, okay? One, one, one suggestion you might come up with instantly might be like, okay, let's set ignore action to true over here, right? When we hit perform action, then we'll come over here and we'll say if, um, only if ignore action is false will be actually perform the action, otherwise we'll set, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, otherwise, we'll set that to false. Right, you might do something like this and you might think that's great and it is to an extent because you can see when I press it, it only fires once. But the problem is, what if I press it somewhere else? Like, this means that always my ignore action will be uh, false. So, uh, consider this scenario. What if I do it on entered? Yeah, that means that when I enter, I perform my action but it means that if I enter and then I click, suddenly I don't perform my action at all, right? Until the next time, which might be bad because maybe you're like, oh, actually I do want to perform my action, right? So how can you kind of uh, work around that? Well, basically um, we can work around that by actually having a separate function function called ignore next, uh, ignore next press, okay? And we'll set ignore action to true. And what that means is that, yes, it does mean, unfortunately, that you have to manually specify button dot perform action and then button dot ignore next press, but it does mean that um, it won't necessarily, as you can see, be the case. Uh, and it looks like our, um, where are we actually doing that? In pressed, okay. So you can see that since we never kind of press our action, it never kind of goes red because we ignore that all the time, but <coughs> that is the price you pay. Unfortunately, if you have uh, that kind of scenario going on, I'm actually quite curious as to why, because we're supposed to, oh, it's because we over overrode it, right? So if you do do that, you can call, um, I wonder if this will actually work. I have no idea. Is that going to work? Because we did kind of, I guess it would, right? Because super is kind of an anonymous class. Yeah, it does. Okay, so you can see there it works fine. All right, uh, when we let go though, you can see it doesn't actually change, which is a bit interesting. So that is a bug. Uh, we, we will fix right now. So you can see buttons are very fun, um, very fun to deal with. UI programming is always a bit, um, it's always a bit, it's not really difficult, it's just, it's kind of, it's very verbose, right, so to speak. So there's a lot of things you have to handle, there's a lot of things you have to get right, it's not very easy to do. Um, it's not the, the hardest thing to do, to, to do, but as you can see, it's a bit, uh, it's a bit kind of messy, it's a bit, um, annoying, which is why a lot of people use UI frameworks. But of course, we're making everything from scratch and we don't quite need the functionality of large frameworks. And if you're making Windows applications, you would never do this. This is just for like the purposes of games, right? So if you're making a game or a game engine, you usually want to have your own custom UI and that's why I'm teaching you how to do all of this stuff. Brilliant. So uh, what, what are we going to do? So the reason it doesn't turn red, I mean, the reason it doesn't go, go away from red is um, because I believe when we press it, where do we actually set the color back? It doesn't seem like we do that anywhere. So I'm kind of a bit surprised as to why it worked in the first place, right? Um, oh, it wouldn't have. I think we just set it to close. That's why, and we never noticed. So when we exit, we probably want to set it to the, to the entered color, I guess, by default. I mean, I don't know. I mean, I assume that it wouldn't matter because if we press it and we release it, and then we exit. So if we press it and then we exit, yeah, it's gonna be fine. So there's really no way you could screw this up. There you go. So there we go. That is pretty much all of the bugs I believe fixed. And you can see we've actually overridden the default kind of 
functionality and uh, placed our own stuff into it. And it seems to work pretty well. We've written, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> I am, I'm so sick of this cough. I'm serious. Anyway, um, you can see we've over, we've overridden the default behavior and we have uh, created some new stuff. Um, and I think the API is pretty good. The last thing that I haven't done is actually placing images inside uh, buttons and we will cover that next time, okay? So thank you for watching guys. If you did enjoy, please hit the like button. One more thing I wanna introduce that is new is I've actually had a Patreon for quite a while. Um, and there have been a few people who have signed up uh, over over the time, and I haven't really announced. I, I don't really I don't really share this too often. This was kind of <coughs> excuse me. This was kind of a thing that I had in the past, and I kind of brought it on and off. Uh, and I I just wasn't sure really what to do with it because I wasn't really clear on what rewards you guys wanted, and I didn't just want to make a Patreon just for donations because I'm not really the biggest fan of receiving donations in exchange for nothing because the videos that I make are always going to be free. I'm never going to charge money for them anyway. So there, it, it just seemed to me like, you know, people donating just for nothing, you know, why would they do that? Because everything you get is, is free anyway, right? So I have finally decided what I'm going to do. And basically I've set up some rewards that I think are actually quite nice. So if you pledge $5 or more per month, and this is per month, it used to be per video, which I found was a bit, was a bit weird because, um, you know, I could release one video in the, in the, in, a, in a month and I could release a hundred. So, I mean, I've never done a hundred before, but you guys know what I mean. Um, it's kind of, even though you can set maximums for Patreon, it's, it's, it might be a bit dodgy. Like some people might be like, yeah, well, I have no idea how much money Cherno is going to take from me. So I didn't want to do that. So now it's per month. That's the first thing. The other thing is, um, for $5 or more or more per month, you get access to the source code of game programming via GitHub. So basically what happens is when you pledge $5 per month, I get your, um, uh, I guess, once the month expires or something, I get uh, your GitHub account name. So you send me your GitHub account name and I add you to a private repository uh, that contains all of the source code for game programming. Now that includes all of the assets, okay? <coughs> Excuse me. That includes all of the assets. It includes the After Effects project that I think I had with everything. It's everything, right? Everything that I've used to make the game that is in that um, project. Uh, folder. So you get access to all of that, which is pretty cool. And then for $10 a month per month, basically, um, I provide support to you personally for whatever it is you may be doing. So if you have any questions about how to write something, if you have any requests for another game programming episode or something, you can send me an email and I'll definitely reply with uh, whatever the answer to that may be. Okay. So those are some uh, pledges. Again, they're not too much. Um, five, five bucks a month, I think is, is pretty fair to receive uh, the source code of 119 episodes and three years of Cherno spending his time making videos. Um, but I also think that uh, over time, when I bring back other series such as game programming, uh, su su sorry, such as 3D game programming, which I'm going to resurrect in an interesting fashion very soon. Um, that's also going to fall under that umbrella and it should generally be a good time. So if you guys uh, enjoyed the video, please hit the like button. If you uh, really enjoyed the video and you want access to some pretty exclusive content, then you can support me on Patreon. Link will be in, this, in the description and on the screen right now. Um, and I will see you guys next time with some images inside buttons. Goodbye.